Welcome back. It's now time to have that very important conversation. You heard the other day that uh, the Minister of Works had a meeting with uh, cement manufacturers uh, to, you know, bring down the price of cement to as low as 7,000 naira from where it was rating to. We're still unclear as to how that will happen. But we're going to expand the conversation beyond cement manufacturers to the entire space called the manufacturing sector, which is why we have our guests joining us uh, from our Abuja studios. Is a president of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Mr. Shego Ajayi Kadri. Mr. Kadri, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. I can imagine what it is right now for you, or I may not be able to imagine, let, let, me, let me be sincere because I'm not a manufacturer, what it means for you to run a business, uh, given how expensive things are in terms of the cost of input, the uh, FX issues and all the gamut of challenges you're facing. So maybe you just give us an overview of what it takes to be a manufacturer right now. Sincerely, how hard is it to be a manufacturer right now in Nigeria? Okay, so thank you again for having me. Uh, I, so, well, to start, I'm not the president of MAN. I'm the director general of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Right. And to answer your question directly, it is difficult. I think that is the best way to put it. Uh, the manufacturing sector is not insulated from the challenges that confront the economy. But for a manufacturer, it is particularly difficult because you have to rely on the macroeconomic environment. You have to worry about how you are going to compete with uh, similar products that are imported into the country that operate in environments that are more conducive for manufacturing. You also have to meet your obligations to your employees pay your taxes and generally plan for growth. So in a situation where you are your own local government, you practically take care of all the uh, infrastructure that you need to operate as a manufacturer, power, water, the roads for your logistics, and even have to worry about the value chain, sourcing your raw materials, that is those ones that are available locally, and then ensuring that those who do wholesale and retail your product are also able to move it in the market in the face of uh, reducing disposable income and general anxiety, insecurity across the country. So as a manufacturer, it is a particularly difficult time. It's been difficult over the years, but now I think the situation is dire. And for a manufacturer, most of them are actually considering whether is worth the while to engage in this business. Now, Mr. Kadri, I, I, I imagine that you and members of your association are concerned about uh, the free fall of the Naira uh, right now, particularly because you need to access it, uh, perhaps for the purchase of raw materials, which is another conversation. But one question that many Nigerians are asking now is, what economic activity at the moment is responsible for the free fall of the Naira against the dollar. I wonder if you are just as concerned and if you can place your finger on it. What's your own theory as against so many things that we're hearing from commentators? So I think it's a historical issue. And uh, it, is, it is not actually in anybody's uh, best interest to try to localize the challenge to a particular thing. I think historically, we've not minded our domestic economy. We have not promoted domestic production. There is no way that you are going to control uh, the exchange rate. You are going to have a positive rate if you don't produce locally. So I think the challenge we have is that we demand what we do not produce. And so our Naira has to continue to pursue the dollar and we are never catching up. So what I believe is the challenge is that our domestic production is weak and we have not taken adequate measures to be able to promote domestic production. No matter 
what policies you adopt if what you need is available in dollar. If you rely for your daily living on what is imported and sold in dollar, there is no magic that will allow you to be able to have an exchange rate that is positive. So I think so many other theories may arise. There are issues of uh, round tripping, hedging against the Naira and so on and so forth. But if there is no high demand, the prices will not rise. So I think uh, it is just for government to make a strategic choice to deliberately promote domestic production of the things that would normally require dollar for. And I'd, I'd like you to just follow up on that with this, uh, with response to this question. So it, cement, for example, which is like the biggest one in the news now, coming off that meeting which the federal government had with manufacturers and the resolution from that saying, well, the price of cement will now come down to between seven to 8,000 Naira. Whether or not people are buying it at that price is another kettle of fish. We understand sometimes these things can take a while. We hope it wouldn't because a lot is dependent on that. But I'd like you to speak to this point. So we stopped importing uh, cement uh, over a decade ago, literally. And the idea behind that was let's produce in-house and hopefully drive down the costs, provide jobs here, boost our manufacturing sector. But the major challenge of these manufacturers that are now domiciled here is literally import related. They say that the FX is a major challenge. Import duties is a major issue. So we've seen the price of cement uh, from just over 1,000 Naira over 10 years ago to 13,000 Naira, even more. Hopefully that reduction will come into play. So does it really make sense if we say we've stopped importing cement, but really we're importing a lot of things from the raw materials to the equipment and the rest. Have we really stopped importing cement for that case, that is? Okay, so I think that uh, it is good for us to actually be circumspective when we are discussing issues like this. And uh, I don't know how one would imagine that the price of cement will remain the same when every other price is rising. I mean, uh, just by way of, uh, uh, maybe by, by the side, I, I went out with my daughter to an Amala joint. And when they gave us her bill, it was 3,000 Naira. And so I told her that when we get into the car, we tell her the story of 3,000 Naira. <laughs> I told her that when I was at the university, I spent three years in the university. I, the amount that my father gave me for feeding for those three years was less than 3,000. So, and that was what she took in an Amala joint in Abuja. So I think generally prices have risen and there is no way you will expect that the price of cement will remain the same as it was uh, 10 years ago, five years ago, and so on. But that is just a general background. But to why the cost is rising now, I think it's also good to know that uh, uh, the price of diesel has risen by, I mean, I bought it 1,350 Naira two days ago. So there are so many costs that have gone north. And we need to situate it within the proper context. If you source the raw material for the production of cement in Nigeria, is that, is that what you sell? Are you selling limestone? There are so many other production costs that goes into it. High by the cost of power. Cement manufacturing is highly power intensive. And so you need to calculate the cost of power. It is a good thing that the Honorable Minister met with cement manufacturers, and that is the way to go. Dialogue is what is important. So you do not just go to take a decision or make some expectations based on, with due respect, uninformed analysis and emotion. Because the price that cement is sold in Abuja, for instance, cannot be determined by the manufacturer alone. There is the issue of transporting it, for instance, of Dangote cement from Obajana and from wherever you are, you are bringing cement. There's a cost to it. 
and there is diesel that is being used by those trucks. There are drivers who require you to pay them a certain amount. There are even people who will offload it from the trucks. What has happened to the cost that is adduced to all of this? Like I just told you about diesel. So it is not only the cost of manufacturing. And when the Honorable Minister went, went with the manufacturer, there were certain things that were mentioned as a conditions precedent to achieving that 7,000. So I believe that 7,000 Naira to 8,000 Naira is, a, is better than what we are having now because some say it's 10, 11, 12, or 13,000 depending on where you are buying from. So I think we need to look at the whole value chain to be able to determine where the challenge is. And you need to sit with the uh, manufacturers, for instance, to say, why are the costs rising? It cannot be in the interest of the manufacturer to make it impossible for people to buy his product or to deliberately increase the price because you are going to lower uh, your, uh, your, your production ca uh, utilization, capacity utilization. is in the interest of every manufacturer to sell. So, and you know, generally, there is uh, uh, a reduction in the disposable income of the average Nigerian. So, you don't have money to buy, and the cost is, I mean, the price is high. So, it's not in your own interest to do so. I believe we should interrogate the issues further to be able to know where the problem lies and where the, uh, the solution uh should come from. All right. Whilst we're trying to interrogate further, I, I want to look at a bit of a short, a long term, uh, before we come to some of the basics of the short term. One other concern that is being raised, I don't know whether this is also going to be looked at in the future, and I think it should. Uh, the space operates by perhaps oligopoly because we know like three or four names in that space. And uh, of course, you know, if you have more suppliers, technically it may not be as low as we want it, but it definitely will come down. Do you think that it is time for people to start coming into that space so that we don't have just three people, four people deciding the cost of cement across the nation? Well, I think there are, there are many sides to it, like, like we've said. Uh, four major producers, you, one cannot say it's enough because, I mean, the more the merrier. But the truth of it is that whatever is happening to the four players now, we happen to number five, number six, number seven, to number 20, and so on. The, the, the issue is that the environment in which we operate is not conducive. And I don't think we should uh, underplay this, this fact. There are so many issues that confront a, manufacture, a manufacturer in Nigeria. And I think government has to be intentional about making that environment <coughs> conducive so that we can have a lowering of the prices. If we have more players, it's not going to improve the operating environment. What it does is that it will allow for maybe presumably more competition that, and you may have a situation where you have more players and the prices do not come down. If all the, uh, if all the other issues do not conduce to that, uh, uh, to, to that narrative. And I must also say that investment in cement manufacturing is huge. So you, it, it's a, a market that not so many people will be able to come into to play. But I mean, I would agree with you. I mean, in manufacture, in the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria promotes uh, uh, competitiveness and competition in, in each sector. We we'll we'll like to have more members play in that space. But the major issue is the uh, environment in which they operate, which has to be conducive for us to have fair pricing. Speaking of the environment in which you operate, sir, um, let's look at the activities of the manufacturers now, particularly in accessing Forex. Uh, before now, the conversation was about delisting 43 items from accessing Forex. But now that that ban has been lifted, tell us about how manufacturers are accessing Forex. Are you now getting it from the banks or you go to the um, Bureau de Change operators? What are the variables involved in that? And how is that um, impacting on um, the, the free fall of the Naira, or perhaps um, it's the other way around. Tell us what exactly, exactly is happening in that space. 
Thank you very much, because that's a very important question. And I think that uh, we should take away politics, we should take away emotions, we should be patriots so that we'll be able to find a solution to it. Because if this uh, uh, free fall of the Naira and the galloping cost of, uh, I mean, uh, of foreign exchange is not addressed, is potentially very explosive. It might lead to so many uh, terrible uh, conditions in Nigeria. You, you see, uh, for us in the manufacturing sector, for instance, there are some raw materials, machines, and spare parts that are not available locally. So they have to be imported into the country. i answer your question directly. We've never had adequate supply of Forex through the banks. And we have made spirited attempts to engage government in such a way that you prioritize allocation to the sector. Because it is one sector that has the capacity to even help you to generate the dollars that you need. So if you give a manufacturer adequate forex that he needs to import his raw materials, spares, and machine, you can easily trace the process completely from raising the form M to when the product is cleared at the port. You can completely understand what he's doing with the forex that he has gotten from the official market. If he's able to bring it in, he's going to produce at a cost that is lower than it should have been. And then he will be able to sell. That means he will be able to help you to bring down mm -hmm. uh, inflation. He will be able to help you to generate more jobs. He's going to pay more taxes is going to provide more business for people who do wholesale and retail. Households needs will be met. We are going to expand the uh, content of our local manufacturing. And very importantly, if the environment is conducive, you will be able to export and repatriate the profit, and it will be in dollars. So that the cost is rising, is a very, very serious matter for the manufacturing sector. Not only this, the rate at which our imports are calculated is quite worrisome. In the last three weeks, we have seen a 60% increase in the uh, calculation of our import duty. So now it is being done at 1,600. I think it will go to 1,700 and 1,800. These are things that you imported, having in mind a conversion of maybe 950 naira. You can imagine what will happen when you have imported the raw material and you take it to your factory and you are producing in an environment where the disposable income is going down. It's not only this, you also have <laughs> gas. Right that is still uh, calculated in dollars. So, and we have one of the highest prices of gas in the world, between eight to nine Naira. So if you multiply that by 1,600, you can imagine how a manufacturer is going to fare when power is, non, uh, is, is not available in adequate supply. Now you are resorted to the use of gas. Gas itself is becoming uh, unaffordable. And not to even talk of uh, I mean, the issue of diesel, which I have earlier on mentioned. So you can see in all uh, directions, you are being constrained. Right. And it doesn't all go well for an economy that uh, aspires to be an industrialized nation. So that, that is how impactful the uh, skyrocketing cost of uh, Forex is to a manufacturer. But Mr. Who Mr. naturally has to respond Yes. Pardon me, and I think just to follow up, this conversation has brought up that age-long dichotomy. Uh, the manufacturer-producer wants to, as much as possible, uh, maximize profit. You know, business is not charity. You're putting a lot of money. And for those purchasing the everyday Nigerian, they want to try as much as possible to purchase uh, at the cheapest, so, such that at least their disposable income is still disposable to a large extent and still helps them to survive. But 
you've made some points which has now taken us back to the question which I asked earlier. And that question is predicated upon, uh, you know, the suggestion that how about we even start importing? And I think that point was made particularly about cement. The cost of gas, you said it's FX determined. So that's some sort of import. The import duties, FX determined as well. The raw materials for some imported, the uh, equipment for some imported. So to a large extent, we're still import dependent. And that is pushing up uh, the prices, the cost and eventual prices that people purchase these things. And my question again to you is, do you support that notion that maybe we should open our borders, import these things so that the prices can at least come down for the average Nigerian? So we're back to that question because the Nigerian out there, they want to go to the market and at least purchase these things cheaper than what it is today. Okay, I, think, I don't think it will be a wise decision for us, except we want to perish the thoughts of industrializing our economy. Uh, but of course, we, we recognize that uh, you shouldn't hold the people hostage. And so we should not uh, uh, allow prices to go northward. But I think what we have not completely agreed on is the fact that the manufacturing environment has to be conducive for you to be able to achieve industrialization. I don't think it is a wise thing to uh, just import everything. To become an import-dependent nation means that you will have an economy that is not <coughs> sufficient, is not self-sufficient, you won't have uh, resilience as a nation, and how are you, what are you going to do about employment? For instance, if you uh, import everything that you need, that means you will be shutting down effectively the manufacturing sector, and there will be unemployment with, uh, together with the social implication and the uh, tax uh, implication for government. So I believe that it is the environment we must focus upon for us to make it conducive. In those nations you are importing from, they didn't leave their uh, manufacturing sector without promoting them. So how, how, are you going to, how, how are you going to develop as a nation? I've said it that manufacturing is a strategic choice that a nation has to make for it to be self-sufficient, for it to be resilient, for its people to have jobs, for government to be able to raise revenue, and quite importantly, for them to be able to export. Because if you export, you will be able to earn forex, and you even make your environment to be conducive for foreign direct investment. You cannot run away from an environment that is conducive for business. And that is what I want you to actively promote. Because importation is being short-sighted, continuous importation and just opening your border is being short-sighted, and you are just postponing <coughs> the doomsday. So I, I, I believe that we need to be mindful about measures that can be taken. Yes, short-term measures to uh, I mean, elevate the suffering of the people absolutely uh, on point. It, it, it makes a lot of sense. But we need to be mindful about the long-term implications of the measures that we take. If you are going to open your borders and allow uh, all manners of goods to come in, you also know that other nations are strategizing. If I were a country right. watching Nigerian economy and I say you open your borders, I will do dumping. I mean, I can promote the manufacturers in my country, pay them the balance, and then just allow them to flood the country. When you kill all the industries all right. that are here, then you can raise your prices. All That's right. a strategy that has been used to erode some of our subsectors in, in, the, in, in the manufacturers' association. Right, but I think it is a choice that we have to make, and this can only be successfully done if you engage the stakeholders. It is good for governments to right. sit with us and discuss essentially how we can get out of this situation. All right, Mr. Mr. Jair Kadri, uh, that's the very point I want to come to. Um, let's simulate that moment where you want to sit with government. So assuming this is the moment where you want to sit with government because they are listening. Uh, from the manufacturer's point of view, in about one minute, if there were three quick things you want to put on the table for government to do as quickly as possible because we're looking at forex, we're looking at interest rates, we're looking at environment, we're looking at power, the variables are many. What exactly would the manufacturers be telling government to do right now to help the economy and help manufacturers supply things at a more affordable rate right now? Freeze the rate at which you calculate the imports of raw materials, spares, 
and machines. That is number one. Number two, also freeze the rate at which you calculate the gas price. As a matter of fact, there's no reason why we should be paying for gas uh, in, in dollars, and it is too high. It is way, way, way too high, one of the highest in the world. Another thing is you need to improve on security because even those raw materials that we saw, um, that we, we get locally, <coughs> with the farmers and logistics is becoming a challenge. All Additionally, right. you should have, you should remove the price verification portal because it's making companies to shut down. They are not able to import those raw materials. I think if government does this, and of course, uh, opens new windows for us to source our, our, uh, our credit at rates that are not lower and that are not higher than 5%. I think these are very quick wins that government can do that can lower uh, the pressure that is upon the manufacturing sector. All right, just, just before I go, <clears throat> at the moment, where do you get your FX from uh, manufacturers? Is it BDCs or banks? A quick one. Where's the fastest route to I get your that is BDCs. It has always been. We have never gotten from banks. They give you less than 20% of what you need, which is a joke. It has always been so, uh, broad the change so and other means. Therein lies the problem. Uh, okay, uh, we yeah. get it now. Mr. Shego Ajay Kadri, the Director General of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, thank you so much for coming on the program and for your insights. We hope that the government listens and things get better for manufacturers. Of course, if it gets better for you guys, it trickles down to all of us. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And well, that's, there's a lot. In fact, I have to go and watch that conversation again because <laughs> again, it right? said a lot of things that something I did not know uh, was the situation. But we'll switch gears when we come back after this break to that question about indigenous languages. What exactly are we doing today about it? <laughs> we'll tell you. Join us again.